Bang! Knees knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife cares making noise in the background. And today we are checking out Alien Knives DX2 prototype. We're going to do the review on it. We got all the information. Everybody's been asking about the link to the Kickstarter. It's in the description. No worries, it's in the description. So we got all the information. We're going to tell all the information that we know in this video. So first up, who's it going to be made by? Cancept Knives. Cancept was originally with Kaiser. Um, I think most of us know that, but if you don't, they were partners with Kaiser and then they split up from Kaiser for whatever reason. And now they're doing their own thing. They make incredible knives and I'm happy to hear that because they make very reliable, good knives with great fit and finish and everybody kind of knows that. So I think that's a good thing. Next thing. Um, it should be all done by January. That's, I think that's what the shooting for is January. Um, we are going to go over the rest of this knife and I'm going to talk about the good and the bad in this video. So let's get to it. First up, this thing's eight and three quarters. So, and it's got a three and a half inch S35 VN blade, titanium frame lock, G10 handle with a titanium liner. Everything is milled out to have a very, very nice weight. This thing's incredibly light for the size of it. It feels really good in the hand. Um, here it is next to the Civivi Picaro, which is nine inches. So you can see it's a little bit shorter than the Civivi Picaro, but these two have a little bit in common. We're gonna go over that in just one second. Next up is the Buck Marksman. The Buck Marksman, you can see it's a little bit shorter than it. And then here it is next to the Sabenza 31. You can see the Sabenz is a little bit shorter than, I think my camera's up a little high too, so. Um, and then here it is next to the Quest Custom Gent. And we'll do just one more for giggles. Here it is next to the Shaman. And this knife, like I said, three and a half inch blade, S35 VN blade steel, very, very deep, thin hollow grind. I measured this thing about eight thousandths behind the edge, but it also comes up to about right here. So that's incredible. That's a lot of life in a blade because you will be guaranteed that even after sharpening it many, 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 many times, you are still eight thousandths behind the edge. This thing slices like a beast. Everybody was wanting to know, why didn't you use it in the other video? Why didn't you show us some cutting? Well, here, check this out. I didn't mean to do it in a zigzag. <laughs> My father, man. That noise. That was tape. Trying. We're holding on all this part. Alright, here we go. I'll I'll have it. so damn fast like through it it's like it doesn't even exist it's like it's pulling through air Nothing. It's incredible. 
Ow. So, um, I did cut up a lot more stuff than that, but that's just where I asked Kara to uh, help me out and film me for a second. Now, the, the sounds on this thing is also really nice. It has a very mechanical sound. It might not come up in the camera. No matter what, it never comes up in the camera as good as it does in reality. So, um, I love this grind. I love the way it works. I love the uses. People are asking, well, are you worried about the strength behind the edge because it's so thin? Absolutely not. Eight thousandths is a very strong edge still. That's where I said before in a video that that's about the, the limit of what I think a good hard use knife could be now obviously if you're talking about slip joints and stuff you know that that's another story i'm talking about hard use knives even striders have knives at ten thousandths behind the edge so you're talking two thousandths behind the edge thinner than that so this is a definite user and i had no problems with the edge and then when it did start showing a little bit of wear it's dropped right back up. It's S35VN, which I think is the perfect steel for this because it's incredibly strong. I think it would have been very, I, I don't think it would have been smart to use um, like an M390 or anything like that. I think you needed a good steel that's nice and strong and has good edge retention and that's S35VN. So that's definitely the steel I would have chosen me personally. It's got a sweet logo. I love this logo. Check this out. And then look at his left eye. That's cool, right? I love that. Love the stone wash. I'm hoping, which I'm pretty sure the, pro, the production knife is going to have this same stone wash. I love that. Now, I do have a couple little complaints because it is the good and the bad. And there's really, I'm just going to be clear right now, there's really no bad, but there is something that I would change if it was me. So we'll get into that in just one second. Um, the sharpening toil was very nice. Now, um, the grind sharpening it, since it's so thin behind the edge, it sharpens up very quickly. That's another beautiful thing. It's very easy to sharpen. Even if you're not somebody that sharpens like S35VN that often, the best way you, sh you could sharpen it is to look for something that's thin. Because anything thin behind the edge is going to sharpen up so much faster than something thicker. You don't have to remove so much steel. So it sharpens up very quickly. And this one right now, I mean, you could just lay a hair on it and it just crumbles. So very, very sharp. And this is even after use. I mean, still nice and glassy smooth. Um, but I did notice like, but this is the prototype. So this isn't a complaint I could ever have. Like little things like see the grind, how it's got a little wave. Now that's nothing to me because this is a prototype, not a big deal. I've even seen stuff like that in, you know, very expensive knives. So that aren't prototypes. So, I mean, that's, that's not that big of a deal. Um, now for the production knife, you know, I know that, that you know, it'll be different. This was a hand ground pr prototype. So that's not a problem. And it'll probably end up getting sharpened out um, eventually. Now, the clip works fantastic. Now, I know people look at right here and wonder, does your pants bundle up in there? Absolutely not. Let's check it out. In and out of the pocket faster than you can say in and out of the pocket. Ooh, I know you guys raced me on that one and then I fumbled it. All right, let's try it again. Go. Ah! One more time. One more time. Bang. Very fast. So it's very nice in and out of the pocket. In the pocket, it is big. It does have a big footprint, but it's not bad. Let's look at it one more time. It's really not. Like, yeah, I mean, I got big pockets, um, but it's not that bad. It's really not. Like, I could carry this very easily because of how thin it is. Check this out. Look at it next to, like, the Griptilian. I mean, so much thinner, oh, wrong side, so much thinner than the Griptilian. So um, let's look at it next to some, you know, let's look at it next to the Sabenza. It's about the same, at, oh, nope, it's thinner than the Sabenza. So you can see how thin it is. And then 
in return the blade is nice and thin too so like like look at next to the shaman blade the shaman blade is a lot thicker so it's definitely a lot thinner to me it's the griptilian it's like about the thickness of a griptilian maybe a tiny smidgen thicker than the griptilian blade but it has an, a lot taller blade with a lot thinner grind which is what I always wanted from the damn Griptilian. Now the action, people look at this flipper tab and they wonder, is it lower than the pivot? No, it is not. It hooks up to right here, so it's actually away above the pivot. This goes up right here and goes over the pivot. So technically you're pushing leverage up over the pivot. So the detent is very nice and the action, you get a lot of leverage. You can light switch it or push button it the centering is nice and perfect even after using it and flipping it tons and tons of times and using it it does have false shut action now you can tighten it up if you want to a little bit and not have it so guillotine and it won't lose center so not a big deal at least on this one this is the prototype also i just want to say how easy it is to take down and take apart it's only two t8s the pivot and then the one backspacer right there or the one standoff right there super easy for anybody to take apart and clean also the access to lock bar you can see how easy it is to unlock and it's super comfortable and you're always past the detent even if you do it really up high on the lock bar super easy to disengage Man, those sounds. Ergos are fantastic, but the one complaint I do have is just this one little spot right here. There's this little hump. My hands, I got kind of big hands, which I'm imagining most people are going to have big hands to get this. Uh, I can't say that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say some people that have big hands are going to get this. Because in all reality, it's not like it's a crazy big knife or anything. But, you see my hands, like if I want to do a push cut, I either go like this, like I usually do. Or if I want to go behind here, I'm kind of smashed right there. Or my fingers got to go up and over. And it just, like I can definitely hold it like this without a problem. But then I'm kind of canted forward a little bit. Now, if I want this to be sucked up to my palm right here, then I got this little pinky smashed right there. Now, I've done it, and it's not that big of a deal, to be honest. But I just feel like it'd be just a, a little bit more comfortable if you just knock this down a little bit. Not from here to here, just a little smidgen off of this little hump. And as I looked at it, it still worked out just fine. The blade is still nice and tucked in there. If you just take out a little tiny piece of the hump, it would make it to where push cuts would be a little more comfortable when you're like, if you do push cuts like I do. So, I mean, I get, I think most people do push cuts like that where they push it up against their palm and get really close to the blade. But I can do push cuts like this, no problem. And since it's so thin behind the edge, it goes through cuts very, very nicely. This thing is incredible. Um, I'm hoping uh, um, that, I well, I already know. This thing's got to go through. Who wouldn't want this? I mean, come on. You guys, this is, it'd be stupid not to fund this. This is an incredible slicer. Let me bring back the Picaro really quick. Now, it reminds me kind of the Picaro in a tiny bit. And I don't mean by looks, even though it is about the same length, just a little bit shorter than the Picaro. But... It slices like a dream. And this thing slices like a dream. So that's that's one thing. And this is a user for me. I use the heck out of this. It's very thin behind the edge. The blade is bendable because it's so thin. But it just works so good. It goes through everything so good. I love using this knife. Um, I actually just did a live freehand sharpening of this knife. But that's where this thing does shine too. So... Let's see this uh, this Kickstarter happen, guys. I love you guys. Peace.